Thank you very much, Santosh. Um, uh, the the uh, verse he, uh, Santosh began with in John chapter 3, specifically in verse 3, where Jesus says to Nicodemus, except a man is born again, he'll never see the kingdom of God. Uh, that phrase, born again, I heard it for the first time when I was about 13 or 14 years old in school. And at the time, I hated that phrase partly because of some, what I saw in some folks who claim to be born again, and then also the conviction I felt by the life of some of the pe people, my peers in school, who were truly walking in the light, and their lives brought such conviction to me. Fear, actually, <laughs> how these people lived, and they were so holy and godly, some young ladies especially at the time. But I hated the phrase, and it was not until about eight years after that 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 statement in John 3, 3 came again. Except you're born again, you will not see or enter God's kingdom. It's just the fact. Being good, being kind, being lovely, being a, born in a Christian home, it wouldn't do. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 says there that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom, no matter how good you are. Except you're born again, a new man, is implanted in you by the Holy Spirit, by Christ's Spirit, you will not see or enter God's kingdom. And God did that work for me uh, several years ago. The book of John is, is a fantastic. Uh, the letters of John, the gospel and all his letters, I've come to enjoy them all so more and more. And I, I can encapsulate or summarize his letters from the, from the gospel all the way to the, all three letters. In two in two uh, two ways, one two things I, I think he talks about primarily. One is about love, and how loving God is keeping His commandment. It's not just some lovely thing we think of in our mind, but keeping His commandment. And the second theme of John's letters in his book is this matter of light, as we heard a few minutes ago, walking in the light and walking in truth. You see that all all through his letters. First John. Second John and third John, he says, they have no greater joy but to see my children walking in the truth. He says that in both letters, in all three actually, that he rejoices that his children are walking in the truth. So light, as we've heard, equates with the truth, walking in the truth. David said in Psalm 51 that God desires truth, honesty in our inmost being. That is what God desires the most, not perfection, but truth in the inward being. And he says that God will teach me wisdom in the inner parts. So honesty and sincerity, let us move away from hypocrisy and walk in the truth. And uh, the question, I mean, when I speak of being born again, one of the things that changed for me was a desire for the one who is the truth himself, Jesus Christ. It didn't start off that way for the first few years. If I had admiration for others in the Bible, even more than Jesus himself. But the day came when Jesus Christ, the man Jesus meant and still means more to me than anything in the world. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 4, 21 says, the truth is in Jesus Christ. It says that, that if you've heard of him and you've been taught by him because the truth is in Jesus. That, to me, is a definition of being born again. That was my experience, that Jesus began and still means more to me. Not even knowledge of the Bible, not doctrines, not Jesus himself, the man Jesus. The Holy Spirit continues to make him more, more great in my eyes. How do we avoid walking in darkness? I'll close with this verse from the mouth of Jesus himself in John chapter 8. John chapter 8 in verse 12, he says this, Jesus says to you and me, I am the light of the world. God is my light and my salvation. David said in Psalm 27, Jesus Christ is my light. And he says that if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. Why? Because you will have the light of life. Follow me. Jesus is the truth. He is that light that enlightens our darkness, as we heard of earlier. So that's what made the difference. That's what still makes the difference for me, the man Jesus. 
that the Holy Spirit may enlarge him in my eyes and drive me, change my character to model his and to follow him. If you follow me, he says, you will not walk in darkness. May we think on this, things we've heard today. May God help us to make him real for us. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Um, wanted to speak as well on the light. Um, something that uh, we hear a lot about of uh, getting light or having light. Um, and for a long time, I, in my mind, I had a wrong concept of it as if that light was revelation, but revelations in term of my mind that if I see a connection in the scriptures, I would say that is revelation because I'd never seen it before in that light. Um, but the more I um, walk with the Lord, I find out that light is, uh, is in essence, Jesus Christ, because we heard earlier that uh, Jesus Christ is the light. Uh, and in John uh, 1, uh, 1 and 4, uh, it talks about Jesus and uh, his life on earth, and I believe it's still true of him today. Uh, in John 1 and 4, it says, In him was life, and the life uh, was the light of men. And as we just heard in John 8 and 12, that uh, that. If we walk with him, if we walk in that light, uh, we don't have the darkness, but we have the light of life. Uh, and if we have that light and we have, if we come to that light, the wonderful thing is that even though it shows us our darkness, it shows us what was in the darkness, it shows us our sin. Um, and, and in the present, it doesn't feel good. But what gives me joy is that in that light, it has to produce it's going to produce life in me uh, and that's what is uh, such encouraging even the conviction message we heard today uh, if we come to the light and say yeah Lord that's that's me that's me uh, we can bring up um, different excuses or justifications self justify self for feeling a certain way or for saying a certain thing a certain way or for doing a certain thing but the light has shined on it, and if we say, Lord, yeah, that's me, I'm not going to justify myself, I believe that it's going to produce life in us. Uh, in 2 uh, Corinthians uh, 4, uh, in verse 6, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 6 and 7, For God, who said... Light shall shine out of darkness is the same one, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of us. So God, is, when he shows us that light, it's just not for us to have a clever or something that we can share with someone or some clever idea, but it is something that is real, that it is the life of God, that if we come to that light, God has shined that light into our hearts, those dark areas of our hearts, my heart, and he's going to, and that light is in the face of Jesus Christ, as we heard uh, earlier, that if it is Christ himself, Christ is the light. If we come to him, uh, who is the light, uh, he will give us that life and we have this treasure uh, in earthen vessels and the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So we will experience that excellency, that power of God, the life of God in our hearts if we continue to walk in the light. And, and that is, is what I uh, want to take with me this morning, even though, as I said before, that it doesn't feel good. Um, in itself, the flesh doesn't feel good when God shines that light. 
uh, because it shows you who your true nature is, who your what your true nature is. That's the thing about the light that it shows you who you are. You can't hide from it. You can cover it up from from other people seeing what is what is going on. You can paint it up, but you in your heart, in your what they call heart of heart, you know. And God's light shines there. That's why the Bible says that uh, in uh, Hebrews four and twelve that uh, uh, the light the um, word of God uh, for 12 for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart and and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So we're not, we know our, our true nature, God shows us. Um, but in that, there's still encouragement, there's still consolation to know that if I have that light, if I come to that light, there is life there because Jesus is there and he's going to give me that life. Yeah, we want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you're encouraged. May the Lord bless you and uh, fulfill it. There's nothing to be afraid of in the light. And whether you have a local church or in your home or marriage, Jesus will be there if you're willing to let the light be on. Uh, let him turn on the light and shine in every area of your life. And at times, uh, I just want to share one thing also. At times, this message is actually prompted through thoughts I've had in the past and thoughts that have been triggered in conversations with different people. How easy it is to get discouraged when we hear strong teaching and see others maybe who seem to be living it. The reality is we don't know if somebody's living it or not. They may be a complete hypocrite, or it may be, but regardless, don't look at others. Look to Jesus, and he says, no matter how hopeless how dark your situation is, your room is, and how much filth there is in it. Don't be afraid. I can take care of it. I hope that's what you've heard today. And I pray for us, for our local church family, that we will be that. The people will come into our midst and say, what honest people. We don't confess our sins publicly or anything like that, but there's a transparency, no pretense. Jesus said about Nathaniel, behold an Israelite in whom there's no pretense. I thought that's a wonderful testimony for us to seek to have in the church. River of Life Christian Fellowship. No pretense. There's no secret stuff. We bring it into the light. God cleanses us from it.